quick look at our schedule. Um, we're going to talk about combining functions and composite functions today. Quiz 2 is due today. Before you hand it in, I just want to make a couple of comments. I did send out an email on Friday because I caught one mistake before I left um, regarding number 3J. 3J, and that none of these um, formulas were correct. And I said, hint, D is the closest to correct. Change it so that it is correct. So, and then, and then over the weekend, I was uh, made aware that I made another mistake. In that, in number four, the first graph, this first graph in the upper left, um, there is no description in the list that matches that graph's transformations. So um, everybody could just write, either write NA because there isn't one that matches. Or some people fixed one and put that letter there, and that's fine, too. Okay. Either, either way will be acceptable. All right, so if you want to fix either of those two things before, you're, before you hand your quiz in at the end of class, that's fine. All right, why don't you take um, a couple minutes to finish up the preview activities, um, and then we'll, we'll come back together and do the demo. All right, so we've got um, f of x squared minus 2 times f of x plus 6, and f of x is just the function 3x minus 4. So I'm just going to make some substitutions. Wherever I see an f of x, replace it with what it's equal to. So this becomes 3x minus 4 squared minus 2 times 3x minus 4 plus 6. And then I'm going to square some stuff, distribute my negative 2, um, and then combine like terms. So this becomes 9x squared minus 24x plus 16. Distribute my negative 2, and I get minus 6x plus 8, and then add 6. Combine like terms, and I have 9x squared minus 30x plus 30. All right, so for domain, to refresh your memory on domain, remember that a fraction, you can plug in any x, x value you want into that function f, unless it makes the denominator 0. Right, so a fraction, the only restriction is that the denominator can't be 0. So I need to find out what x values would make that denominator 0 and exclude them from the domain. So first, I'm just going to set the denominator equal to 0, and that will tell me what values I cannot plug in, right? Because then I'd get a, a 0 in a denominator is like creates a black hole, like Anna said. So this factors, so I get x minus 3 times x plus 1. Set each factor equal to 0, and you get x equals 3 or negative 1. So there are two x values that you can't plug in, or you get a 0 in the denominator. The easiest way to write this answer is set builder notation, to just say the set of all x's such that x does not equal negative 1 or 3. That's the quickest, easiest way to write it. Um, my math lab often asks for interval notation. This is called set builder notation. So if I wanted to write this in interval notation, I would have to say, OK, well, I'm starting at negative infinity. Where's the first place I run into an issue? Negative 1. So I've got to stop at negative 1 and jump over it. So I put a round bracket, meaning don't include the negative 1. And then I can start again at negative 1, but not including the negative 1. And I can continue until, where's my next problem? 3. So I put 3 down. Don't include it, because it cannot be part of the domain. And then union that with 3 to infinity. So that's how you would write that in um, interval notation. On a quiz or a test, you can give either unless one is, is specifically asked for. OK, so when you're dealing with a fraction, you have to be careful not to put 0 in the denominator. 
What do you have to be careful about when you're dealing with a square root? Negatives, right. You can't have a negative under a square root. Okay, so let's... We have to make sure that whatever's under the square root, in this case 3x plus 12, it can't be negative. It has to be bigger than or equal to 0. It has to be positive or 0. You're allowed to take the square root of 0. A lot of people confuse that because 0 is an issue with fractions, but it's not with square roots. So now I just solve this. I get 3x has to be bigger than or equal to negative 12, which means x has to be bigger than or equal to negative 4. And if I was going to put that in set builder notation, I would write the set of all x's such that x is bigger than or equal to negative 4. In interval notation, I would put negative 4 to infinity, including the negative 4 this time, so square bracket. All right, so moving into our demo for today. We're going to be creating new functions from old functions. We're going to com combine two or more functions through the operations of addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. So this is just a little bit of notation here. If you put f plus g and then the x, that just means f of x plus g of x, and you just add the two functions together. Same with subtraction, multiplication, and division. So when we want to look at um, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division of two functions, the domain of any algebraic combination of two functions is the intersection of the domain of the two functions they're combining. So if the x value is going to go into a combined function, you have to be able to put it into f and into g. All right, so here's an example. Um, if f equals x squared and g is 1 over x plus 1, let's look at the domain of f. Okay. So what values of x are you allowed to square? Anything. You can square anything. There are no restrictions. So my domain of f is all real numbers, negative infinity to infinity. And if I were to graph it, I would just shade the entire number line. All the real numbers are in the domain of f. All right, the domain of g. 1 over x plus 1. What x values do, am I allowed to put into that function? Anything but negative 1. So I would, you could say, you could even write just in, in words if you want. Anything except negative 1. So if I were going to, um, graph the domain on a number line, I would need to find negative 1, exclude it by putting an open circle, and then shade everything else. And then the intersection of the two is where they overlap, right? The points that the x values that they share. So any place where I have both pink and green graphed is the overlap. Okay, so the domain of the intersection is the overlap. So anywhere that there's both pink and green, so I've got all over here, all over here. But I, I can't include negative 1 because there's only pink and not green at negative 1. All right, so now adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing is just really straightforward. And the only hard part is the domain, but we have found the domain of all of them. Okay, this is the domain. The intersection of f and g is the domain of all four of these um, combined functions. So to add f plus g, that would just be x squared plus 1 over x plus 1. And if you really wanted to, I guess you could get a common denominator and add them together, but I'm just going to leave it like that f minus g is going to be x squared minus 1 over x plus 1. Done. Okay. f times g, x squared times 1 over x plus 1. That would be easy enough to 
quickly do the multiplication, so I'm going to do it because it's not that much work. So I get x squared over x plus 1 when you multiply those two fractions. And then f over g, so I would have x squared divided by 1 over x plus 1. Dividing by a fraction, same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. Yeah, flip and multiply. So this is, I'm going to simplify this. It's not too much work. x squared times x plus 1 over 1. And this becomes x cubed plus x when you simplify it. Okay. This is the only, the only one that might trick you into thinking the domain is something other than what it is. So f plus g, what's the domain of this f plus g? x squared plus 1 over x plus 1. Any x values that we need to exclude? Negative 1. That is the overlap, right? So this is the set of all x such that x does not equal negative 1. There's the domain. How about f minus g? Any x values we need to exclude? Negative 1. So my domain is the same. Set of all x's such that x does not equal negative 1. How about f times g? Any, any obvious x values that need to be excluded? Negative 1. It's the same exact domain. But this last one, f over g, are there any, after I've simplified it, are there any obvious x values that need to be excluded? No. Once you simplify it, it looks like you can put in all real numbers. But you can't, right? You have to look at the original unsimplified version. And that one, you can't put in negative 1, right? Yeah. So it, the problem will ask you to simplify, but the domain is still x is such that x does not equal negative 1. Often it's easier to figure out the domain first so that you don't mess it up by letting it trick you. Yeah. You're right, it is x to the second. Thank you. Yeah, get to distribute that x squared. All right, so that's adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing fractions and finding the domains. The next part of the lesson is about composing functions. Okay, so another way to combine functions, rather than using regular arithmetic, we could say, Let's use the output from one function as the input to another function. So for example, let's say we have two functions, m and f. Um, m of p is the mother function. So m of p represents the biological mother of person p. And then we have a f function, the father function. f of p is the biological father of person p. So um, who do you think m of f of p is referring to? What do you think that notation means? The mother of the father of person p. Yeah. So ignore the m first, right? f of p we know means the father of person p. And then you take the m of that person, the mother of the father of person p. So that would be the grandmother, right? And I think we would, we would call this the paternal grandmother because it's your grandmother on the father's side. All right, so here's the definition of how we compose functions. The composition of the function f with the function g is denoted by f little circle g. You've got to be careful. That's an open circle, which is different than a dot, right? The closed dot means multiplication, and that open circle means composition. So that composition circle just means f of g of x. It means take g, plug it into f. The domain of the composite function, x has to be able in the domain of g, and g of x has to be in the domain of f. We'll do an example, make that clear. 
All right, so we get the same two functions, f and g here. f of x is x squared, g of x is 1 over x plus 1. I want to find f composed with g at 3. That just means f of g of 3. This composition, as with most arithmetic, you work from the innermost parentheses out, right? So we're going to work the innermost parentheses out. So that says take the 3 and plug it into g, right? So first thing I want to evaluate is g of 3. So you look at the function g, what do you get if you plug a 3 in there? Quarter. One quarter, yeah. So f of g of 3, replace g of 3 with what it equals. This becomes f of 1 quarter. g of 3, you just plug a 3 in there, you get 1 over 4. All right, what is f of 1 quarter? 1 16th f is the squaring function, so this becomes 1 16th. Here's a slightly more visual way to picture this. f and g are, are functions, which um, we have used in, as an analogy before, a machine. Okay, So we have an f machine and a g machine. f composed with g means run those machines successively. Right, so you're going to do the innermost machine first. So this is G, and then here's my function, my function machine F, and I'm going to drop a three into the G machine. Okay. So you'd put a three into the G machine, you turn the crank, right, and G takes whatever you put in, and it does one over that thing plus one. So out from the G machine comes one fourth. You take your output from the G machine, pick it up, move it over into the F machine, and then turn the crank on F, right? And F squares stuff. F is the squaring machine. So you take that 1 fourth, goes through F, and it comes out a 1 16th. Okay. All right, what if I run the machines backwards? Right? So here I was doing F composed with G. Now I'm going to do G composed with F. So run the machines backwards. I'll start with the pictures this time and then I'll do it algebraically after. So this time the function F is going to come first. And then I'm going to run the result through the G machine. So I'm going to put a 3 into the F machine. What does F do to a 3? makes it a 9. f squares things, so it makes it a 9. Then you take that result of 9, drop it into the G machine. What's G going to do to a 9? Make it 1 tenth. So 1 tenth is going to be the result there. If you wanted to do that algebraically without drawing pictures, I would write G of f of 3 start at the very innermost parentheses. So I would start by evaluating f of 3, go to my formula, and I'd go, oh, okay, f of 3 is 9. So replace f of 3 with the number that it equals. So you do g of 9, and then you take that 9, plug it into the formula for g, and you get 1 over 10. Did the order matter? Yes, we got different answers in the in the two different orders, so absolutely. Yeah. All right, so let's see if we can come up with a general expression for f of g of x, a formula for that will, instead of having to run two machines, I just want one machine that will take x as an input and tell me, what do you get after you run the two machines? All right, so g of x is my first machine here. It's the innermost parentheses. So I'm going to draw a picture. This is uh, g. This time, instead of picking a, a random number, I'm putting in a generic x, right? And then I'm going to run my two machines in succession. Okay. When you drop an x into the function g, what comes out? You got it, 1 over x plus 1. 1 over x plus 1 is what g will produce. Then I'm going to take that 1 over x plus 1 and drop that into the f machine. right? What does f do to stuff? Squares it. 
So whatever I put into F, no matter how crazy looking, right, it could be a little barking dog or something, right? No matter what you put it into F, it just squares it, right? So this is going to become 1 over x plus 1 squared. Whatever you put in, it squares it. So that is my formula for F composed with G. And if I wanted to do it algebraically, right, I can do it both ways with the pictures or more algebraically. I would say, okay, well, f of g of x, right? This, this expression means, it's just some function notation, if f of x equals x squared, then f of anything, right, f of smiley face would be smiley face squared, right? Right? Whatever you put into f, you just square it. So if I want to do f of g of x, that means g of x squared. And then g of x is 1 over x plus 1. Just replace g of x with its formula. And now we have the composition. All right, let's go the other direction g composed with f of x. Generic formula if I switch the order of the machines. So I'm going to start with f, putting an x in there, run f and g successively. Okay, we put an x in f, what comes out? x squared. You're going to take that x squared and we're going to run it through the g machine. What happens when you put it through G? Awesome. 1 over X squared plus 1. Because G takes whatever you put in and does 1 over that thing plus 1. Good. Let's think about the domain of what we just created. We just created a function, G composed with F. Let's think about the domain. Did F have any restrictions? No, the F machine will never jam, right? No matter what you put into it, it can spit out something, right? You'll never, you'll never break it, okay? Can the G machine ever jam? If you put a negative 1 in, yeah. So I have to make sure that the thing I put into G, right, this thing, I have to make sure that that thing is never negative 1. So I need to make sure that the thing I'm getting out of F, because it's going to go into G, it can't be negative 1. Otherwise, I might jam the G machine. All right, are there any X values that you can square and get negative 1? No, no, not real ones, right? So this never happens, so I don't have to worry. No problems. Okay. So my domain is just going to be negative infinity to infinity. I can put any x value in here, and I don't have to worry about either machine jamming. What's the matter? Anna? So why don't I have to leave out the negative 1? That's a good question. That was for the that was for arithmetic, for adding, subtracting, multiplying and dividing. For composition, we're going to we have to look at the two machines in succession. Yes. Yes. The domain is just the set of x's you're allowed to put into the machine, right? So negative 1 isn't a problem because when I put x equals negative 1 into f, what is negative 1 squared? 1. No problem yet. I haven't jammed the machine. Then you take that 1 and you put it into g. Not going to jam the machine either, right? So negative 1 is not a problem. Even though it's a problem for g, 
it's not a problem for G composed with F. Okay. Um, let's do the other order. Yeah. If I do F composed with G of X, right, so that means I'm going to run the G machine first. Right, so G goes first, then F. If I put an X into the G machine, what X's do I have to avoid here? Negative 1. I can't put a negative 1 into the G machine. So I have to avoid, so I'll just keep like a little list here. X equals negative 1, right? And then out from G comes 1 over X plus 1. That's going to go into F. Um, is there anything that I have to avoid putting into F? No, because I can square anything. There's no restrictions on F. So that's my only that's my only restriction in the other order. So it would just be the set of all x's such that x does not equal negative 1. Negative 1 squared is positive, yes. Because I'm starting with the g function now. Yeah. So my function g is 1 over x plus 1. So I'm starting with g, so I can't feed a negative 1 in there. Yeah. This is a hypothetical. This wasn't part of the original lesson. Somebody asked, what if I switch the order? Yeah. All right. So there um, are some examples in your class activities where the domain gets a little bit trickier. There are restrictions in both f and g, and you got to figure out which ones you care about. Um, so, yeah, that's it for the demo. Start the activities. <coughs>